uh, Patrick Shivanek is uh, Associate Pro Professor from Tsinghua University and he joins us now. So, uh, Patrick Shivanek, uh, tell me something, is it a sham? Well, look, Dagong uh, was already very negative on U.S. debt. And in fact, uh, just to put it in perspective, even before this most recent downgrade, they had U.S. debt at a lower rating than uh, several issues of Chinese local government bonds that have almost no cash flow and questionable collateral. So I think that uh, Gong tends to have a hypersensitivity to U.S. risk and a bit of a blindness towards domestic Chinese risk. Yeah, so to what extent is this also just to grab headlines? Well, look, I think it reflects uh, Da Gong's real view of the world. Whether that's shared by the rest of the market is, is another question. Um, da Gong, uh, I think that uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it, it reflects a, a certain point of view in, in, in uh, China. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with it, but uh, I think the danger is when it starts, when, when, when Da Gong's analysis, uh, you know, Da Gong brings up a lot of the points that people are aware of around the world uh, and, and concerns that other people share. But then it takes those to an extreme that I don't think a lot of people would follow them towards. So, uh, so really, uh, when, when it starts to shade off into more of a polemic about the dysfunction of the U.S. political system or uh, uh, the bankruptcy of American culture, you know, I, that may be emotionally reassuring in China, but I don't necessarily think it's that helpful for, uh, for investors. Well, you know, the question, I guess, Patrick, here is also who listens to them? Well, Dogong makes the very valid point that uh, back uh, with several things, including global financial crisis, the uh, major rating agencies really drop the ball, and they say that there's room for another voice, and they're, they're correct about that. And ultimately, uh, people like Da Gong, uh, will, they'll be listened to or not, depending on uh, how well, how predictive uh, their, uh, their ratings are. And if it turns out that uh, uh, the U.S. is selling junk and that Chinese local governments are, are the new gold standard, then, uh, then they'll be hailed as geniuses. And if not, uh, then, uh, then they'll look foolish. So, but I think that the, the more important question is how much is the Chinese government really going to be affected by this? And, and I think there's a myth out there that the Chinese government holds treasuries is a discretionary holder of treasuries, then that if it got fed up, then it would simply pull the plug and take its money and go somewhere else. That's not the case. Uh, China's investments in treasuries are a reflection of uh, its economic growth model where it has to accumulate dollars in order to keep the renminbi low, and it has to put those dollars somewhere. So China may fret and fume about the situation, but until it changes its currency policy and its overall economic structure, it's stuck. Well, it's one of the things Da Gong looks at, isn't it? Large currency reserves mean that that particular country is less risky. What do you make of that? Right, that does seem to be a bedrock of the view. And I think that what they're ignoring is the fact that it, global imbalances cause just as many problems for surplus countries like China as they do for deficit countries like the United States. So, uh, for instance, uh, China's endless accumulation of dollars uh, both exposes it to losses uh, on those investments, but it also fuels inf inflation and uh, perhaps uh, malinvestment in the Chinese economy. And that is as great of a risk, and it's not a sign of, uh, of a strong economy. It's, it's actually the sign of a weak economy that's dependent on a growth model that, that uh, has really outlived its usefulness. Uh, very quickly, of course, uh, the uh, main ratings agencies in the West uh, will have their credibility shot to some extent uh, during the financial crisis of 2008. How much have they restored that, uh, their image, and uh, are they at the moment perhaps being overly aggressive at times? I don't know whether they're being overly aggressive. What I would say is that investors have learned not to simply rely on ratings to uh, apply their own knowledge and judgment and that ratings uh, ratings are of course very important in uh, regulatory structures they define uh, what kind of uh, capital people have to certain institutions have to hold against investments and they define uh, what certain what certain institutions like insurance companies can hold but I think uh, people who have broader discretion in what they can hold uh, they look to rating agencies as one data point, but uh, I think they've learned to look to many other data points to form their own judgment.
Well, thank you so much for joining me as uh, there, Patrick Shivanik there from uh, Tsinghua University, just uh, going through what's uh, been happening in terms of Donghong, uh, this, the ratings agencies out there and uh, their performance after one in China, of course, uh, downgraded uh, the United States some time ago.